Well guys, 48 gigabytes DRAM kit have made their appearance on the market now for a while and the prices have finally stabilized. So I think today is the right day to do a proper analysis on if they're worth the money, when you should buy them, if at all. So welcome back at Amazon PSUs and let's get started. Now the specific RAM I have here today is the Team Group T-Force Delta White ARGB. And I'm picking this one simply because it's the RAM I put in my personal build when I built it a few months back. And I have been super happy with it, honestly. It's just super easy to get the XMP running. I have a Ryzen 9 7900X. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Intel as well, and not only AM5. Now, kind of like most brands in the market, they made a full refresh. And so what we have here is two by 24 gigabytes of DDR5, same exact model, but instead of 6,000 megahertz, these are 6,400 megahertz and they have the same latency. For the tests, I will just lock them at 6,000, so we have the same exact memory speed. However, first thing I'm gonna say as to why this might be worth buying is they have been produced later in the manufacturing process. So what happens is DDR5 is still a relatively recent release and the AM5 is the first AMD platform with DDR5. So in general, you're not gonna be able to go over 6,000 megahertz if you're on AM5, but those kits are meant to be used on M5 as well. They are EXPO compatible and the 6400 works out of the box. Why? Because these have been produced later on in the manufacturing process. So they have had time to refine the die, get better memory chips, get better connectivity on the DRAM itself. And so first positive is in general, if you buy a 40 gigabyte kit compared to a 30 gigabyte kit that was produced a while back, these have a better refined memory. Also, 16 and 32s are slowly, very slowly, going out of production because this is basically a refresh. So the 40 gigabyte kit is meant to take the place of the 30 gigabyte option, not to come in as a competition. This is a replacement. And same goes for the 96 gigabyte variant, which is going as a replacement of the 64. So in the future, if eventually we will only have 40 gigabyte kits, you kind of will have to buy them in place of the 32. However, as of today, there is actually a kind of interesting thing in the market, which I will say right away. Basically, in this exact moment, if we go on Amazon and take a look at the prices, those are quite a bit more expensive than the 30 gigabyte kits. Matter of fact, at the moment, you can buy a 30 gigabyte kit for just a little over a hundred bucks. You can buy the same exact kit of 48 for 170. So that's roughly a 70% price increase for 50% memory capacity. So off the get-go, at the moment, the value for money is not quite there. However, we have plus. So unfortunately, some games are actually starting to use up the whole 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now that's the case of modded game, especially. So if you're playing like modded Skyrim or like modded The Witcher, those things, you can definitely go overboard with RAM. First advice I have for you is if you know what you're gonna be doing with your PC, just check online, try to get a rough estimate of how much RAM you're gonna need and see if it exceeds the 30 gigabytes of RAM because more RAM does not result in higher performance. Matter of fact, it results in lower performance. We will cover that later. But if you exceed the capacity of RAM, let's say you need 34 gigabytes of RAM and you only have 32, then you will get a substantial performance hit. So you definitely do not want to saturate your RAM. Now, if you're only playing competitively, like for example, Apex Legends, Warzone, and then staying on Discord with your friends, and maybe you have a video in the background, 32 is plenty fine. You don't need more. But if you're playing like Microsoft Flight Simulator, or one of those games that uses a lot of RAM, then you might wanna consider those. And at this point, the choice basically is, if you need more than 32, are you getting 48 or 64? Well, at the moment, unless you're doing productivity, heavy productivity, it's pretty tough to saturate 64 gigabytes for gaming. So for gaming, this is probably the better choice. However, there is a very strange thing in the market right now, which is why I'm making this video. Basically, you can buy 64 gigabytes kits for cheaper than these very often if you only need memory capacity so when should you get the 48 is actually in a performance scenario because the 64 gigabytes are very high density sticks because they are two by 30 gigabyte sticks and as we mentioned before in the video they were produced early on in the manufacturing process so what happens is they generally clock lower or they clock the same with higher latency. So you are effectively losing performance. And now DRAM 
can get you all the way from 5 to 10% more performance, depending on how you set it. So it's a lot. It's like an overclock on the CPU if you get uh, better RAM sticks. So you want to definitely keep that in mind if you're playing competitively and you're going to be needing a bit extra RAM, maybe because you're streaming as well, or you just want to be sure. Those are a good buy. Also, let's say you need a lot of DRAM for productivity, but you want more performance. Well, if you were to get the old 128 gigabytes of RAM, you would have had to either put four sticks of 32 or two sticks of 64. Two sticks of 64 clock very low. Like it's too much capacity to handle for the IMC of most CPUs. So you're losing a lot of clock. We are talking 10% to 15% clock speed that you're losing on average for the same quality of chip. But if you get the 96, which I've had on the channel, by the way, in my wooden PC build, they are much lighter on the IMC. Matter of fact, I was able to lock 6,000 megahertz on them pretty easily. Another very good thing is, let's say you have 30 gigabytes of RAM in your PC and you wanna expand it. If you put 48 there with the 32 you have already, you're gonna be at eight gigabytes of RAM. Now you might be wondering what's happening. Well, let's say you don't like the powers of two, you now have a nice even number. So it's definitely worth the buy. No, I'm kidding. But let's move on with the conclusions. So when should you buy those new chips? Well, if they become the only one available, probably should buy it. But if you also have the 30 gigabytes of RAM, you should buy them if you're exceeding the 32 or you think every now and then you might slightly exceed 32, then you're a good buy. They're better than the 64 if you're after performance. However, right now the market is a bit strange. So sometimes you will find lower clocked 64 gigabytes of RAM for less than higher clocked 48s. In that case, now it's difficult to choose. So if you're selling computers, like if you're a PC flipper, buy the 64 because it's more RAM, so you will sell the PC easier, which is also what we do on the channel. But if it's for you, if you're after performance, just buy these. But if you just like a bit more RAM, I'd say you can compromise the performance a bit and maybe try to gain some back with overclocking, but don't expect to reach the same performance as a nice high clocked 48 gigabyte kit. And if you're buying one, review after one year. I've had that kit in my personal build for a while and it has been running flawlessly. So the 48 gigabyte kit, I've tried for a few days. It's basically the same. So I can definitely recommend the Delta T4 RGB in white if you wanna buy a good RAM kit. So with all that said, please let me know down in the comments your opinion about this topic and what would you buy uh, 48 for a bit more expensive, 64 for cheaper, or if you try them and if you found some issues, which I haven't, let me know in the comments. I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.